Today we're taking a first look at the Newhouse Metalworks Solstice Mullet. This is the first episode in a new series I'm doing featuring small builders. A lot of people know the hardtails from the big companies, Trek, Specialize, etc. But a lot of people don't know that there are hundreds of frame builders out there building radical hardtails. And I want to use this channel to bring them to you. So this is the Solstice. It's available as either a 29er or a mullet. And because of my height and my riding style, and because I think they're interesting, we decided to go for the mullet for this build. This thing looks amazing. Nick, let me choose the color. And <laughs> I've been waiting for the right frame to, to choose this color on. And I think we nailed it. Man. It's not just neon pink. It's neon pink with like a metal flake sparkle. And I think that's awesome. And to ride a neon pink frame, it's got to be a good bike, a rowdy bike, a fun bike. At least that's my thoughts. So... Here we are. This is a steel frame. Let's take the wrappers off and take a look at it. Even just sitting here, you can see how rowdy this thing is. Oh my goodness, that looks rad. So I love small businesses, especially in the cycling world. Hardtail Party is a small business, and I love supporting other creative people who are out there chasing their dreams. And Nick has quickly become a friend after chatting with him and then his design philosophy and his background that's hot he's a nerd like me except he knows way more than i do about geometry and frames it's been fun picking his brain and learning from him but he's a regular guy he's a guy with a regular job and he builds frames on the side so he's not cranking out a thousand frames at a time and it's a passion project for him it's something that he loves he loves writing and he's actually been getting more and more requests especially from bike shop employees of all people who get discounts on factory brands that's his main customer right now are people that work at shops because they're loving how they ride nick has a bmx racing background like i do and he believes in geometry that makes them ride fun like bmx bikes so this has a nice short chain stay i'll share the geo with you in a second but i just want to tell you a little bit more about his philosophy and the philosophy of this model in particular he pays attention to things like ride feel and geometry he's very particular and he has been for a long time. And I think that makes for a very discerning builder and someone who's thinking about every little detail all the time. Some riders are super nuanced like that. Some riders aren't. And uh, Nick took that nuanced approach to the motorcycle, motorsports world, to mountain biking, and he applies his background and his knowledge to the frames he builds. So, man, this thing is beautiful. I love the neon pink. I've been waiting for the right neon pink bike. And, man, uh, if it rides half as good as it looks, this is going to be a good thing. It's, like, glowing in my shop. I can't wait to take it outside. Now, small builders have some advantages and disadvantages for them. Number one, they're not buying tubing in $50,000 orders at a time like some big companies can. So it costs them a little bit more to make their bikes. On the flip side, they have the ability to be agile and change direction and embrace new standards immediately. There are some brands out there who've been running their bike for four or five years before the next model comes in. And that bike was five years outdated when it came in. And so smaller builders are able to get experimental faster. They're able to follow trends faster. They're able to get an eye on what parts are coming in and which components are on the horizon so that they can anticipate that and they can build a frame up from complete scratch in a few months, whereas a big company has to go through this huge process to get them done. So we can see newer technology faster on the smaller builders. And they're also able to customize little tweaks now and then. So if you like Nick's design, but you wanna change something, you can talk to him about it. He's a guy who welds these up in his shop and he's able to be more flexible than another company where you wish it was two degrees slacker or the chainstay was a little longer or it had sliding dropouts or whatever. One thing he's done differently that I haven't had yet in the shop is we are using a T47 threaded bottom bracket. It's a different size shell 
It's the same width that we're used to. It's still threaded. It still takes a 30 mil spindle. It just requires a different bottom bracket when you buy your bottom bracket, but that gives the builder more area to work with. It helps him be able to keep the geometry the way he wants and the heat the way he wants in this union. So this is my first experience with it. I've heard a few builders talking about it recently and asking if I would want it on my bikes, and I'm not sure, and today we're gonna find out. The truth is, once you buy the bottom bracket, it's exactly the same as everything else. So if it makes the frame better and it makes it easier for the builder, I'm all for it. I just can't swap my other bottom brackets onto this, but I don't know that I wanna call it a totally new standard. It kind of is, just in the size of the shell, but I wouldn't get too bent out of shape and worry about that too much because it will still fit any crank that I'm working with right now anyway. So one other thing Nick is doing that wasn't done on this model, but is coming out on future ones, he's partnered with a guy who 3D prints pieces for these bikes. So he'll 3D print chainstay yokes. Probably the thing that excites me the most about Nick's bikes and his approach is how seriously he takes chainstay yokes. This sounds really dumb, but I've worked with a few companies and said, I need more clearance in my chainstay yokes for bigger tires. And they said, can't be done. We'll have to push the chainstay out to 450, 460. And they weren't willing to redesign their chainstay yoke. Nick has spent more time thinking about chainstay yoke shape and design and strength and flex and all that than most companies put into any geo number. And so I'm really excited for the future. This bike doesn't have a 3D printed yoke, but future bikes will. And I've seen the prototypes of them and they look rad. Regardless, this is a really sleek design. I like this yoke, how it looks, at least here in the stand. And he's a BMXer. He likes the short rear ends. He likes it to manual well and hop around and play. And that's what I want this bike to do really well. So I'm excited about his chainstay yoke shape. It's He's pushing it in ways that other people would rather stay comfortable and use what's always worked. But he's able to get things differently because he's willing to push it. So in here, you can see the really cool clearance for the chain ring here. I like how these are straight and the tubing didn't connect till here. You can see where his yoke joins his chain stays here. Really cool how he's doing that here. You can see where the seats tube joins. It should be able to give me a lot of good clearance in there and still be able to fit some big chain rings. The dropper goes internal here. And because we use the bigger T47, the dropper cable can connect through here and stay completely internal from here all the way through. Every other steel frame I've seen, it has to exit here and then re-enter, but we're able to just slip it through there. That's pretty cool. This is just mastic tape that I've cut into triangles. I like that it gives it some bumps there. I feel like the ridges help keep it quiet. You really need it the most down here where your cogs get smaller. Up here, you got the big chain ring, so the chance of your chain actually contacting up there is very low. All right, kind of fun. I just threw this on a scale, and even with the dropper housing, this came in at 5.83 pounds. Anytime it's six or below, I'm impressed. Holy cow, Nick has done it. I don't know how he's been able to keep this so light, but this is light. And Nick understands the value of not having an overly stiff frame. And so he's told me he's built some good compliance into this. With how light it is, I got a feeling he probably achieved it, but we'll see on the ride review. He does use uh, custom butted tubing on this. So this frame comes in at 1500 bucks. Why would you buy a custom frame for 1500 bucks when you could get a Merino in Peru for five or 600? Well, because there's a lot that goes into it than just the numbers. If all you care about are the geo numbers, go to Merino and get it built there. The thing about working with a smaller builder like Nick or other small builders is the good ones can talk with you and consult with you, see what you want out of the bike, see what you don't want it to be like. Some people want the softest bike possible. Some people want the stiffest bike possible. Some people are gonna be jumping them. Some people are gonna be racing XC on them. And a good builder can fine tune the ride feel to the rider as well. And that's something that really gets overlooked. And so 1500 might sound like a lot for a steel frame when you consider Merino out of Peru doing that, or when you consider how much, I don't know, a Hanzo ST costs or something like that. 
but you're forgetting the small builder aspect of it. And anytime you get a small builder building something, it's going to be more expensive because of the economy of scale and their time and the little you know, personalizations that they can do, like making it fit and feel the way that you want it to. So that's why you would spend 1500 on a frame because if this rides three times as good as a Marina with the same exact geo, to me, that's worth the extra $1,000. Now I'm not bagging on Marino. He's got a really interesting thing going on there. I have never ridden one of his bikes. I've heard some things, but I have no firsthand experience, so I won't share that. But smaller builders like Nick are able to do things that Marino can't. And part of that is having a conversation with them. Part of that's turnaround time. Nick has a very fast turnaround time. So that's what you're getting. You're getting an experience, not just the cheapest frame you can get for the numbers you want. Anyway, I'm impressed with how light this came in. I weighed it twice because I couldn't believe it was that light. So bravo, Nick, especially for something as rowdy as this. All right, we got some cool stuff going on here. First of all, room for a 175 mil dropper. That's huge for me. Second of all, water bottle bosses on the seat tube, yet the seat tube's inserted in there. This is one of those little things that you get when someone's creative like Nick and is thinking outside the box and solving problems that the bike industry has been ignoring forever. He, instead of bolts that go into the seat tube, he welded bolts on the exterior poking in. So I run a nut on my water bottle cage. Genius solution, so simple to this problem. So I can run two water bottles with the 175 mil dropper. I've never ever been able to do that on any bike. That's rad. All right, so this is a mullet or a mixed wheel or a 27.5 rear, an MX, however you want to call it. Let's see if a 2.6 fits in here. This is what I have for 27.5. Oh, yeah. Woo, it's close. So it's tightest on the sidewall. The lugs clear just fine. I would probably just move that notch back a little, but it's clearing. It's got two or three mils of clearance. I decided that was too close for comfort. I can flex it by hand into the side, even with these bird spokes, which is a nice soft wheel. Yeah, I just don't want to cut it that close. So I'm going to steal the wheel off the Chameleon MX. So we've got a 2.5 aggressor on here on a 30i rim. I think the narrower rim makes all the difference there. We got a couple more millimeters here. Yeah, that looks better. We're using a wheels manufacturing bottom bracket. Oh, tons of chain ring clearance. I ride clipless and flat pedals on different bikes for different reasons. I love the way that a mullet corners, a good mullet, and I corner better on flats. So I'm gonna start this out on flats. Then we'll see if I decide to switch to clips or just leave this as my flats party bike. So Nick made an interesting choice. It's beautiful. And uh, the head tube has integrated headsets, so no headset cups. You just set them right into the frame like a Chameleon or a Yeti Arc. So you're not going to be able to run an angle set on this. But if you're running an angle set on a bike from a small builder, you should have just told them <laughs> what head angle you want. Oh, man, this is beautiful, this pink. This is a 130 Helm. The helm is a heavy fork. It's one of the heavier forks. It's so worth it. This is the best feeling fork I've ever ridden. I love the helm. It's super adjustable. If you know what you're doing, you can get it to ride just about exactly how you want. It's my favorite fork by far for, especially where weight isn't a huge concern with how light this frame is. Man, man, this is looking good. I'm excited. <laughs> it is all built up and this thing looks amazing. If you need help deciding on your next bike, especially a hardtail, I have a bike consultation business. I do that via Patreon. I'd love to help you over there to help you avoid making costly mistakes by getting the wrong geo or the wrong size or the wrong bike for where you're riding. I love helping people build bikes, select parts, and decide for their next hardtail. And I'd love to help you over there. It came in at 30 pounds on the dot. You got a heavy cassette, heavy tires, heavy wheels. I love the way he integrated these bolts to be able to run a bottle on the seat tube without interfering insertion. I love the chain stays. I love the tight, compact rear end. 
it's one of the lightest steel frames I've ever had in here, which is wild because it's meant to party. Here's the geometry. This is a size short for 5.6 to 5.10 riders with a 140 fork. I'm running a 134, so it's going to be a little bit steeper. 64 head angle, so I'm at 64 and a half. 455 reach, I'm probably closer to 457. 638 stack, love it. 415 chainstay, 38 mil BB drop, C tube angle effectively 75 degrees with the 385 C tube length. That is so rad. There are a lot of brilliant people out there building rad bikes in their garage and in their shop after hours from their normal job and they're doing some amazing things and i can't wait to bring more of these to you but for now nick at newhouse metalworks i am thrilled with the direction he's going and i can't wait to see what he comes out with next there's a party in the mountains and you're invited <laughs>